In the primordial soup of the you know early early single celled organisms, you had glucose being metabolized in the absence of oxygen through a 20 step process down to a chemical called pyruvate. And that's kind of how things went for a period of time. And those organisms could only get so big because you had to have an energy gradient across the cell membrane. Well, as you get bigger, your volume, if you're going to double your size, your volume increases by a factor of eight. Two times two times two is eight. But your surface area, that which creates the energy gradient, only increases two times two, four. So... If you double your size, your ability to generate energy drops by 50%. Over time, other organisms developed that created a cell membrane inside of a cell membrane that was all folded up on itself. So it had a lot more surface area to generate energy. These were little protobacteria, and they fed off the waste product of these single-celled organisms. And they can make a lot more energy because they had a lot more surface area because of everything folded inside this membrane inside of a membrane. Well, eventually those things infected these single-celled organisms and had a symbiotic relationship. Those became mitochondria. So that is the whole relationship between the anaerobic component of metabolism and the aerobic component of metabolism. So... The only way to really ramp up the aerobic component of metabolism is to deliver substrate more quickly to it. So the only way to stimulate the aerobic subsegment of metabolism is by ramping the anaerobic portion of metabolism as fast and as aggressively as possible. So that's why we're finding now all these studies on high intensity interval training producing equivalent aerobic adaptations in a four-minute Tabata protocol as you get from 45 minutes of steady state. Well, the same thing is true of resistance training. And what it comes down to is the way that you can get at that metabolism and make it crank as fast as possible to deliver substrate to the mitochondria is by doing mechanical work with muscle. That's the only way you can get at that system. It only stands to reason that the higher the quality of the mechanical work with muscle, the more you can invoke that entire process. And resistance training just happens to be the mechanism by which you can get the highest quality mechanical work with muscle to drive this whole process. Now, if we take, you know, Kenneth Cooper aerobic from Kenneth Cooper's aerobics from the 1970s that said what happens in the mitochondria is somehow linked directly to the heart and the vasculature. That makes no sense physiologically at all. The heart and blood vessels service the entire functioning of metabolism, the entire cell, not a subsegment of the cell. So it turns out that the best cardiovascular training you can do is the type of training that invokes the totality of metabolism to the most aggressive degree possible. And that just so happens to be properly performed resistance training of a high intensity. That's it.